Hey, welcome back guys, JC here. A common question I get is what do I recommend for the gyro update frequencies as well as PID loop frequencies? So I have created this for you guys. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is just my opinion. Everyone has a different opinion in this hobby. If you don't like my opinion, then don't use my advice. And the way this video will work is uh, I will explain how I came about this and I'll be plugging in different flight controllers and giving you a first hand view of what I'm talking about. As far as the gyro update frequency, this will come down to what flight controller you are using and whether it uses SPI or I squared C, at least for the F3 boards. For the PID loop frequency, this will depend on what type of ESCs you are using, but it also comes down to what your CPU load is. And what I mean by CPU load is, if you look down here, we will see it here. What I will recommend is you want 35% or lower. Some people say 20, some people says 50, but I shoot for 35 or lower. So the first thing you need to know is just because you are using multi-shot or say D-shot 600 ESCs, this does not mean you can run your PID loop frequency at eight kilohertz. Now for the gyro update frequency, I would always recommend running its max potential except for the F1 boards there is one little thing about that which I will show you in just a second but as far as a F3 board that uses I squared C just place it on 4 kilohertz a F3 board with SPI place it on 8 kilohertz and then for F4 board you can pretty much max everything out it's not gonna make a difference now to show you exactly what I'm talking about let's start with the F1 boards and we will work our way up that way you will have a better understanding of what I'm talking about so right now I have a uh, NACE32 plugged in ready to go. One thing I will say is all these boards that I plug in and show you guys uh, some demonstrations I have already set them up to how I would actually fly that way the test will be similar and the same uh, that way I'm not cheating any flight controller out or anything like that. Uh, so this NACE32 I have set for 2 and 1k and we are sitting at 20% which is fine it's below 35% now let's say we want to use the accelerometer because uh, maybe you want all three flight modes. You want to be able to fly in angle and horizon. Well you need the accelerometer for that. But the thing is the more features and things you turn on the higher your CPU load is going to go because it's now doing more thinking. It's working harder. So if we turn that on we are now sitting at 100% CPU load. At this point your your multi rear won't even fly. It probably won't even arm. It's just going to lock up. Now your other option is uh, the gyro update frequencies and PID loop frequencies actually do play a huge role in the CPU load. So if we actually set this to 1K and 1K with the accelerometer on, we're now at 20%, which once again we're fine. So uh, that's why I said earlier with a NAS32 or any other F1 board, it can be 1 or 2K depending on if you're using the accelerometer or not. Now as far as the PID loop frequency, uh, like I said, you don't want to run a higher PID loop frequency than your gyro update frequency. So if you have the, uh, whatever flight controller you have is set to, uh, let's just say 2K, then you don't want your PID loop frequency to go past 2K. It can be the same, but not any higher. But then again, uh, you have to balance it out. So, like I said, we can run 2K and 2K as long as your CPU load is fine with that, but in this case, it's not. So, for the NACE32, you're looking at a maximum of 2K and 1K. The next thing I need to explain is the ESCs. Like I said, uh, you can use multi-shot and D-shot ESCs on a NACE32. You just can't use 2, 4, or 8K. The thing is with one-shot 125 ESCs, you can actually run them up to 2K. Some people even say 2.7K, but I don't recommend that. I'm just going to say a max of 2K with one-shot 125. But the big point that I'm trying to make is no matter what ESCs you're using, whether it's one shot 125, 42, multi shot, or D shot, you can't even use the full potential 
of any of these ESCs. You can't use the full potential of one shot 125, which is the slowest of all of them. So that is why I made that NACE32 rant video uh, talking about why not to buy one, because you're only looking at 1K for the PID loops. Okay, now let's move on to the F3 boards. And this will depend on if your F3 board uses I squared C or SPI. So I'm gonna plug in a board, a F3 board with I squared C, which uh, specifically this is the Seriously Dodo. And I've got it set to 4K and 4K, and we're sitting at 27%, which is good. It's below 35. Now, for some examples, uh, say you have multi-shot ESCs, which are capable of 8 kilohertz. But you don't want to do that because it's higher than the gyro update frequency. What about uh, F3 board with I squared C and one shot 125? Do you want to run 4 and 4? No, because like I said, the max potential of a 1-shot 125 ESC is 2K. Now other F3 boards are running 8K on the gyro update frequency. So why can't we do that with this one? We'll even set this back down to 4. Because we're at 100% CPU load, that's why. What about 2K on the PID loop? Nope, still at 100% CPU load, so it's not going to work. So is there really that much of a difference between an F3 board with I2C and one that uses SPI? I mean, they're both F3 processors, right? There shouldn't be that much of a difference. Uh, well, let's test it. Uh, 4K and 4K on this Seriously Dodo, we're at 27%. Now let's move on to the F3 board with SPI. And this specific one is the Omnibus, but as long as it's a F3 board with SPI, they're all going to run at the same speeds. Uh, so we were at 27% on the last one. Let's see what we get this time. 7%. 7% is a lot lower than 27%. So they both have F3 processors, but this just goes to show that they're not all the same. Now for these uh, SPI F3 boards, you can run a 8K on the gyro. So let's try this on 8K, set this to 4K. And we're at 17%. We're, we are still good. As a matter of fact, this F3 board, even though they both have F3 processors, this one using SPI, even at 8K, is still 10% lower than the other F3 board using I2C at 4 and 4. So we're getting twice the gyro update speed with 10% lower CPU load. That is a huge difference. So some more examples. Uh, say we use... Um, uh, the SPI F3 board with multi-shot ESCs. Can you run the full 8K because multi-shot ESCs can handle that? No, you can't because as uh, I've shown you before, the CPU load is going to jack up. And we're at 52%. Some people say that's fine. Once again, I'm going to say that's a no-go because it's higher than 35%. Personally, I would not do this. Now, some people are separating the PWM speed from the PID speed and manually entering in 8K and what this will do is we were at what 55% now we're at 51% it will drop it you know 3 or 4% but uh, the reasoning that they have behind this is because it, the processor is actually using like a whole separate circuit and clocking system it's a long explanation that's I'm not going into that that's not what this video is about I'm just gonna say I don't recommend it even if you are separating the motor PWM speed from the PID speed I would not do it so I would just keep it at 8k and 4k so to answer the question no we cannot use the full potential of multi-shot or D-shot 600 ESCs 
but could we use uh, one shot 42? Yes, 4K is the full potential of a one shot 42. Could we use one shot 125? Yeah, absolutely. As long as you don't go past 2K, because that's the limit of one shot 125. Okay, now let's move on to the F4 boards. These are actually extremely easy to understand and comprehend because it doesn't matter what you sling at these, they can handle it. So going back to my little chart, you can run 8K with the F4 board and you can uh, you can actually get the full potential of multi-shot and D-shot 600 ESCs because the CPU load will allow it. So we, we see I've got D-shot 600, 8K and 8K, and we are only at 3%. For this reason, that is why in race flight they have they are actually running 32K on the gyro and PID uh, frequencies because the CPU load will allow it. The processor can handle it. So uh, long story short, you can use the full potential of multi-shot and D-shot 600 ESCs. You can also use one-shot 42. Just remember, you can't run your PID loop frequency at a 8K with one-shot 42. Just like you can't go past 2K with one-shot 125. So uh, at that point, your ESCs will now be limiting you severely. And that pretty much does it, guys. So just to reiterate, you don't want your PID loop frequency to be higher than your gyro update frequency. So you don't want to do 1 and 2, or 2 and 4, or 2 and 8, or 4 and 8. You can run them the same, 8 and 8, 4 and 4, 2 and 2. And you can run lower on the PID loop. So you can do 8 and 4, or 8 and 2, or 4 and 2. And all of this is assuming that your CPU load is low enough, that your processor isn't being overloaded with, you know, commands and stuff like that. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. As always, I'll leave you a link to my playlist in the description below so you can check out some other videos. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.